Hello everyone. What do you think about management? What management is? Maybe you uh, listen in the word management, you imagine the great boss in the great onshia and they give an orders what we have to do. So it seems to me that um, all the people know this word, but what is the content of managerial work? Let's describe together. Let's consider it. I am Olena Prokhorenko, Kharkiv Polytechnic University, Ukraine. Let's go to the manager of doc and see what is it. Some little bits of history. Oh, yes. At, oh, approximately one and a half hours ago, it was a division of labor. We, uh, we are talking not about the reasons of division of labor. Let's talk about vertical division of labor. What does it mean? With the growth of industry, it was a division of types of job on, uh, how to say, blue collars and white collars. What does it mean? Blue collars or ordinary workers were engaged in technical and radical operations. And they didn't need know what they have to do. They just perform the orders given by another type of workers. This another type of workers will be white colors. And they be engaged in planning, in preparing decisions, and they will they need to do what exactly need to be done. So you see that if blue colors were engaged in technical and technical operations, white colors were more likely engaged in intellectual work. Yes? Because decision making is intellectual work. So the main characteristics of managerial labor, you can see here that it's first of all it's intellectual work. Managerial labor is intellectual work. And we can say that this labor is activity for coordination of actions of all participants of some activity, of all participants of organizations, of some group of people. And the main initial product of manager labor is taking decision. All of the uh, activity begin from taking decision. So first of all, we have to decide what exactly we will do, how exactly we will do, what resources we will use, what type of operations we need. So the first have to be started from taking decision. So the main initial product for manager of labor is taking decision. What about object? Um, what about should be taking decision? As I just said, what we have to do? how we have to do, or uh, what resources we need. So the object of manager activity is all type of organizational resources. Very often I have heard that management is uh, the main uh, object of management is people. Yes, sure. However, not people only. Because it can be natural, material resources, Legal resources, informational resources, financial resources, and so on. So any type of resources can be object of managerial activity. And what about means? So please, cashier, uh, cashier has a cash specific equipment, and builder has a stones, for example, and some other specific equipment. But manager has, manager has its own brain. As management is intellectual work, so it means that the main means of a manager of work is our brain, our intellect. And we are sure the artificial brain can help us to process the data, to make calculation in order to take the right or the most correct or optimal decision. So the means of our Manager of labor, uh, natural intellect, and a difficult way. What uh, to put or to which type of activity to management can be used to? 
So the first we need, it seems to us, that we need to support the next. So, yes, sure. So, uh, any head concerning his subordinates can be considered as much. But not only consider, uh, we have not only considered uh, as subordinates, because are neither of any kinds of works in some specific divisions, some target groups, branches, departments can be managed. And third definition, third definition is that employee of any level whose work is related to coordination and decision making can be named manager. For example, sales manager, he or she uh, doesn't have subordinates. However, he or she is involved in a concluding agreement and looking for clients in communication with clients or communication with another department of a uh, company in order to satisfy clients. So it's kind of considered, he can be considered as a manager. Who please in the picture? Who please in the picture? The oldest manager job is what? So uh, let's look about uh, ancient times. So Shepherd. Shepherd is the first manager of labor because he or she uh, didn't was involved in technical and mechanical operations. He was not builder he, and another, maybe some specific operations, but he was responsible for horse or sheep or another animals, but he was responsible to gather them, uh, to make sure that uh, they can eat and uh, drink and they are healthy and so on. So he or she was responsible, maybe he or like, was responsible for a group of some type of resources like sheep. So we can say that shepherd is maybe the oldest type of managerial job. So for now, uh, usually in companies can be considered some levels of management. Top level are more likely involved in strategic operations, in strategic plans. And the main feature is that top level managers have uh, greatest goals, but small number of goals to make your company profitable, to satisfy your main group of clients, and so on. What about low level or supervisor level? They, on contrary, they top managers, on contrary, they involve a large number of day to day operations. They can large number of goals and purposes, but each of them can be uh, solved during one day. So, please, high uh, level of management uh, has a one, two, so small number of goals, but the volume of those goals is great. And on the contrary, low level or supervisor level managers, they have small volume of the purposes, a large number of them. And there is the main difference between top level and uh, low level specific labor. And what about middle level? Yes, sure, they are some average, so they can relatively, uh, they can have relatively high or lowest type of goals, but small, large number of goals. So there is a, some average level between top. And, uh, top and low level managers. Some first about power. What power is in manager in managerial activity? We need to describe it before we consider managerial functions. What power is? Power is ability to impact the behavior of another person. What can be base of power? There are two kinds of power. First kind um, means that it has organizational base, and another one has personal base. Organizational base can be, I mean, organizational base power can be based on punishment, on reward, uh, resource powers, and documents of traditional powers. What does it mean? It means that one person can be subordinate to another person because this another person has the power to punish or to reward 
Jesus Christ's power. What about Rasul's power? To be honest, there was the greatest power to be honest. Because one person uh, be subordinate to one to another person because this another person has resources the first person need. And as you are this first person, you are interested in some resources, financial, material, informational, uh, human, and so on. You will be agree with the orders given by first person. What about two parents? How do you play? Mm, you, as you are manager, maybe you don't have like great abilities to reward or punish your subordinates. However, you are responsible for results of their work, and they know it. And it's written in organizational documents, in your subordinates' job descriptions, that they need to be your subordinates. This type of power is named dominance, but it's based on responsibility. It's based on responsibility that manager has concerning his or her subordinates. What about power on personal base? What does it mean? It means that in your organizational hierarchy, you are equal. So you and, uh, for example, your manager, uh, you don't have a different official of power. Imagine that you have a person who is much more experienced and knowledge. And you maybe would be listening to this person and perform his or her advices or orders. And this is a type of export power. So one person is about to make to another because this another person has the greatest experience and knowledge. Experience. What about charisma? It's power which doesn't have any logical explanation. It means that you are not able to explain why you want to perform the orders given by another person. You just like him or her. You cannot explain correctly why so. Maybe you know some fact from his or her life and this fact impressed you. Maybe you just like how this person is talking and how it's looking and it's so on. So it's any some specific logical explanation. What happens in that place? Uh, let's, as we have considered some fundamentals of managerial labor, Let's consider manager of labor from three positions. From point of the manager of functions, point of manager of roles, and point of manager of skills. Because in Harvard review it was an article uh, which names that management is what managers do. Unfortunately, it's, uh, it says not so much yes. So uh, to explain what manager of work is, it's possible to consider this work from three positions. And these three positions were proposed uh, by a great uh, scientist, uh, Henry Flegel, and Linsberg, and Robert Katz. So, there, um, really, it's uh, some number of classifications of manager of functions and roles and things, but it seems to me that these three are the same. So, first of all, manager of functions. Managerial functions. So, if you know something about management, maybe you know the cycle of management, what is it, and you know that management consists of the main four functions planning, organizing, motivation, and control. So, in managerial work, we can consider these four as the core functions. So, according to Henry Fayo, the first managerial functions is strategic, it means planning. Means answer the question, what exactly we have to do? So it's planning, projecting, and so on. The next function, according to Henry Fellot, is administrative. And it sounds similar like organizing. What does it mean? It means distribution of authorities and responsibilities. Who 
need to do what? Who is responsible for one or another result? Who can be given resources? Who can be rewarded or punished and for what? This type of function is named administrative and it's a similar with uh, organizing in manager cycle. The next function described by uh, Henry Fayot is expert advisor. Expert advisor functions means that as you are manager, you need to help and explain your subordinates what exactly they need to do. So it's just interpretation of professional confidence and consulting or coaching of your subordinates and so on. Next group of functions described by Olivia can be considered as the supportive functions. What about this? Representative function. What does it mean? It means that you are responsible for protection of interest of your group of subordinates of your company. So you represent as your manager, you represent the interest of your group of your company in external environment. You are responsible. And there is your function. Next function is educational, or more likely it can be said that upgrade. Uh, doesn't mean that you I just explain to people um, how they have to do. Sorry, put the face. <laughs> what about some specific of their behavior? You have to be an example because your subordinates will repeat your manners, your behavior, your attitude to work, your approach to make decisions, and so on. So, as you are example. You will see your subordinates as your mirror. Next, psychotherapeutic. Again, it doesn't mean that your subordinates will sit in front of you in armchair and uh, tell you about his own personal problem. You know? As your manager, you have to create a comfortable atmosphere in your group, in your branch, in your department, in your company. And you have to be sure that your subordinates uh, enjoy the environment in your company. And there is a main function. And the next and the, the last function we will consider now is communication and regulating function. What communication is? It's a flow of information. And this information can be given, transferred, uh, found, transferred and interpreted correctly by your group. That's why you are responsible how to provide this information floor in order to make it clear for your subordinates or for your group. So you see the main functions like strategic, administrative and expert advisor and number of supportive functions. Yes? What about another view of managerial on managerial role? What about managerial roles? Roles is a type role is a type of behavior uh, which provided in one or another situation by manager. According to classification proposed by Henry Ginsberg, managers should perform 10 roles. However, these 10 roles can be divided into three groups. The first one is interpersonal, so it's connected with um, relationship with people. Another uh, group is informational, so it's connected with uh, providing the informational flow of communication. And the third group is connected with decision. If you ask me, I will tell that I would prefer that the third group should be the first because decision making is the initial, the first maybe features of managerial labor. So, first of all, we have to consider managerial labor from this point of view. However, in original motion, the first 
uh, grew this into process. So based on this picture, there, there are three types of roles. And the first is named figurehead. Figurehead means that as you are manager, and especially as you are top manager or owner of the company or CEO of the company, you are responsible for uh, legal and social activity of your company. So you have to sign documents and you are responsible before external environment. So it's the great, greatest responsibility. What about leader? Leader means that you have some great authority and you can lead the people and motivate them to achieve some goals. According to this picture, it can seem to you that boss is a bad guy and leader is a good guy. No, no, no. It's mistaken. Because you need to be both in order to determine where we should go. And that's why you have to be quiet. You have to see longer. You have to see where, where exactly we should go and what we need to do. As you are leader, you have to be first and lead the people. But firstly, you have to know where we should go. So we cannot say that boss is, in, according to this picture, boss is a bad guy and the is a good one. No, no, no. But we need different roles in different cases. What about Lisa? Lisa is some sort of interlink between the um, requirements of external environment and our account. So we need to satisfy uh, needs of our company and at the same time we need to satisfy requirements of external environment. So interim is a sort of interpersonal role. The next group of roles are informational and it's the same thing. Monitor, dissemination and spokesperson. Monitor looking for information and he is responsible what information you will use in your activity. Disseminator means that you can divide the information and give to your subordinates to branch exactly that information that they need. And it's again a high responsibility because you need to give them relevant information and sufficient information, but not more uh, than they need. Because so much information make your inability to make decisions. So you have to divide the information on relevant and unrelevant. What about the third role? Imagine your photo on TV or on poster or on the first uh, page of some magazines. It's like you are a representer of your company. Imagine that you are face of your company. This role is very attractive for people who are looking to be published. Because imagine that any around you knows that you are High post manager, you are director, you are CEO, and your face is associated with the same company. So, really, you become coach, and this role is very, very attractive for a large number of people. So, it means that you present, present the interest of your company, that you represent your company next to your wife. And the third group, as I just said, it seems to me that. It's the most important decision or connected with decision making. The first type of role is entrepreneur. It means you have to decide what type of business we will do, what exactly we are going to do, and what projects can be realized 
what uh, types of innovation can be implemented and so on. So you have to be creative and you must have uh, some risk at the key in order to be the job. The next row is a resource allocation. And if I said the spokesperson is uh, one of the most attractive roles, I can say that this role is the most attractive because you have a great power. Maybe you remember we talk about resource power. So it's a power thing. Resource allocator means that you have a power to distribute resources. And you have to decide uh, who will be responsible for what or another types of activity. Resource allocator means organizing, means distribution of authorities, duties, and responsibilities. Yes? Next, disturbance handling. What does it mean? Would um, you prefer to solve short tasks in emergency situation, or you prefer to work in stable situation, not not hurry up, and work with long projects? Any of your projects. Um, it's not able to go without some fluctuations and to move your process back to normal way is the task of disturbance handler. With another words, we can say that disturbance handler is like crisis manager. He has to be able to make decisions in emergency, in extraordinary situations. These decisions can be taken fast. Look on this picture. Who is it? Maybe you know that there is a portrait of Alexander the Great. And there are many historical examples when people who were very attractive, very successful crisis managers, like Alexander the Great, lost all of their achievements in stable situation. Because maybe um, it's some um, dependency of adrenaline or some another psychological type. That if emergency we are able to make decisions, if stable situation we lose an interest. So we need crisis manager for this situation. And maybe you are more perfect in stable situation, and maybe you are the best in crisis situation. What about the last negotiator? Negotiator means that you should be able to make decisions during negotiations, during meeting with counterparts, and it requires your ability to make decisions and to communicate with other people. So there is some mix between. Uh, decisional roles and informational roles. So you need to process information fastly and to make decisions. So in the given classification in our opinion, there is a one list role. It's a role of professional or expert or role of specialist. Because as your manager, you have to teach yourself what you need to do. And that's why you have to realize expert power, yes? So it seems to me that this classification is not good, but it's my own opinion. And the last approach for which we can consider a manager labor. It's managerial skills. What skills do you need to have in order to be a perfect manager? There are many classifications of skills, and you can say that you have to have uh, some hard, hard skills and more likely soft skills. And when I ask my students, uh, show me please the perfect manager. Usually, uh, they do me the perfect ideal person. However, uh, it seems to me that the best way to describe managerial skills is a classification of Robert Katz. So according to his opinion, there should be three groups of skills. 
And the first group can be named conceptual or business skill. It means your ability to create a business. It means your ability to uh, create organization, to find people you need, to find people with specific skills, to find resources. It means your risk appetite. It means your ability to predict future and requirements of external environment to your company. So it's more likely entrepreneur and like to do like entrepreneur to start to set business, to launch new projects and so on. Another type of uh, skills can be named human skills. So you need to be some sort of psychologist, you need to be a good team member, you need to communicate with people, you must have some oratorical skills in order to explain people what they really need, in order to convince people that they will need to do something, in order to be a good leader, in order to motivate people and explain them what's the necessity of doing one and another thing. And the third group of skills can be named technical. Oh, please, it's a rare situation when you are just manager. So you are just involved in decision making. You have to be specialist in some specific field. Imagine that you are head of marketing department. If I have to be special in the market, yes? Imagine that you are a head of production department. You have to be a technologist and you have to be engaged in technological operations in order to make it better, in order to improve it. So you need to have some technical skills in depending on in what sphere your company acts and in what sphere your, uh, your own Teachers are uh, conducted. So, technical skills, human skills, and conceptual of business skills. Do you possess this full range of these skills? What do you think about yourself? Can you be a perfect negotiator? Can you have an entrepreneurship? Uh, some directions and find the best direction for doing business? Are you able to make decisions in crisis situation? So, what do you think about yourself? Do you possess all these basic skills? And are you able to perform all the listed roles and realize all the listed functions? If yes, so, congratulations, you are perfect manager. But what to do if not? What to do? Think about it. What to think? Yes, the first answer maybe you had to improve yourself and develop yourself and develop another type of skills. Yes, sure. But you are not alone. You are not alone. And you can create a perfect team. Different people can possess different skills. And the main thing you have to create not group of star people, but star team. And you can find people which who possess the necessary skills you need for doing the best business, the perfect business. So you are not alone. And this is one of the most important tasks of management to find people who possess all the necessary skills. Because, okay, you are not alone. And nobody is perfect. It's one of my favorite expressions. That nobody is perfect. But you can create a perfect team. The roles, functions and skills vary in different management levels. Maybe remember that we talk about top level of management in the company and organizations middle level and low level. Do you remember what's the difference? Maybe you remember that we talked that 
low level measures are engaged in, large number of tasks every day. But each of these tasks is relatively small and can be performed during this day, yes? And on contrary, top managers are involved in one global goal to make company profitable, to make successful business, yes? And uh, this goal can be realized not uh, in one day, but in one year, four years. However, it's a big volume of this goal, yes? It's a vicious goal. And what about middle management uh, managers? Uh, okay, they are some average, so they have average number of uh, goals uh, during some period, and the volume is right from the greatest to smallest. Okay, what do you think? These functions, roles, and skills can they be realized differently in different? Managerial levels. What do you think? Which of these roles, functions, or skills are more or less inherent to one or another managerial level? Try to fill up this table. Try to choose only one, the most important of. Okay, let it be two. No more than two, the most important roles, or no more than two, the most inherent functions, and only one group of skills, which is the most inherent to one or another level of management in the company. What do you think about it? You can see this table and try to fill up. Maybe in your mind, maybe you can take a list of paper, try to fill up it. What do you think about it? Does it different or similar? Or it doesn't matter uh, what uh, functions is more or less inherent to one another type level of match. But please, there is a management skills continuum. And you can see that according to this, managers of low level need to possess technical skills first of all. It means that more likely they will realize the function of expert advisory or educational, yes? Because your first coach is your low your supervisor, your low level manager. And it means more likely that these managers will spend less time with external environment. It means that low level manager, managers will less involved in strategic planning. And they will less um, do like entrepreneurs. Yes? So for low level managers, more inherent technical skills, advisory or supervisory functions. And maybe the main goal they can perform it should be like leader or maybe disturbance handler. Yes? What about top level? You can see according to this continuum, the top level management has to possess first of all conception of business skills. So top level managers have to be entrepreneurs first of all. And it means they have to realize strategic function first. So strategic functions, uh, strategic function and uh, entrepreneurial role should be the most inherent to top level. Of course, figurehead should be, of course, the top level manager too, because it's a realization of social and uh, legal responsibility of company. Yes, sure. But uh, what about the core business functions? So it's uh, more likely strategic planning and entrepreneurship. What about middle level? See with this continuum. Look at this continuum. You can see that more likely this type of managers have to possess human skills because they 
work are more the most related to communications, to interrelationship between different groups of people, different units of the company. So more likely this group of managers have to be a communicator first of all. They have to be resource allocators because resource allocation means uh, distribution of duties and responsibilities, yes? So resource allocator is the most appropriate role for middle manager, as well as maybe to be a communicator and disseminator of information, sometimes negotiator, as well as top manager. So what does it mean? How you feel yourself? Which type of managerial work is closest to you? What type of activity you would prefer to solve the small task with flash number, to be a coach, to be a supervisor, or on the contrary, to be a strategist, like entrepreneur, and to choose how to do the business better? So, um, think about yourself. What is better for you? Identify who are you and in which field you would be the best. And don't forget that you are not alone. And the main thing is to create a perfect team. Next slide. So, managerial activity or managerial labor can be described as uh, some groups of roles, functions, and skills. However, scope and content of these skills will depend essentially on management level in the company. And you can find and create a perfect team because nobody is perfect. And I would like to say that if you like management, if you are interested in it, join us.